Many baseball analysts predict the Rays to go deep into the postseason. But after having those same expectations last year and missing the playoffs for the first time in three years, the team knows they can't rely on expectations. They have to play their game and take it one day at a time. Derek Calloway and new USF head coach Willie Taggart have something in common. They both played football here at Manatee High School. Now, Hurricanes head football coach Joe Canan says it's no coincidence that Callaway ended up at USF. 73-65 was the final from the Sun Dome as the Bulls lost their second straight conference game to number 24, Notre Dame. The Bulls went into halftime with a seven-point lead, 35-28, but the second half was a different story. Notre Dame went on a 15-5 run to take the lead for good. The Bulls were led with career days from Zach Lede and Javante Hawkins. Lede had 17 points, a Bulls scoring high, and Hawkins added 11 of his own. Notre Dame was led by Jerry and Grant, who had 18 points, and Jack Cooley added 14 rebounds for the team. Next, the Bulls will head to Milwaukee to take on Marquette on Monday evening. From the Sun Dome, I'm Cassandra Khan for Bulls Radio. Rehab a term becoming very familiar for today's young athletes. Children 14 and under account for 40% of all sports injuries. The USF Physical Therapy Center and the Stop Sports Injuries Campaign are combating this trend by reaching out to coaches and athletes and teaching them techniques in preventative medicine. We can share information with the patients and their families, parents for example, and coaches, and then have them and, and direct them to a resource such as the website in order to learn more and to guide them in their injury prevention and then injury recovery. While in rehab, USF is helping athletes get stronger and smarter. A good amount of education goes into it as to how to prevent future injuries and how to maintain the new level of performance that we've established because my goals for my patients are to not only get them back to their prior level but make them a much more efficient athlete than they were before they got hurt. The Stop Sports Injuries campaign was created in 2007 when doctors saw that overuse injuries in youth athletes was becoming a critical issue. They partnered with USF in March of this year and together they hope to promote safe and smart play while extending the career of the Tampa Bay youth athlete. Reporting from the Morsani Center, I'm Cassandra Khan for Florida Focus. The world's fastest spring break party added some horsepower to its lineup this year with the addition of historic sports car racing. Unlike other racing series, the cars and drivers are readily available for fans to access and learn about. Called HSR, the goal of the race is to expose fans to pieces of history at the track. So historic sports car racing is really very special for drivers, for the crew, for all the people involved with the organization to be able to keep these historic pieces competitive and continue to race over the years. Historic sports car drivers are different from any car drivers because driving is not their day job. They do it for the passion of the cars and not for the money. Every single person that's involved with the vintage sport is here for a love of the automobile. If you talk about the rest of the paddock area here for the Indy cars, for example, you'll have some people here because they're sponsors. You'll have some people here who are looking to increase their business. With vintage racing, everybody passionately loves cars and they love racing. This car is a McLaren chassis with a, it's called an M6B is the model. I've been involved with vintage racing and with, with uh, HSR for, for several years now, a lot of fun. And it's a great way to go racing, a great way to come out and have fun on a weekend. Reporting from St. Petersburg, I'm Kasada Khan for the Digital Bullpen. After a seven month hiatus, baseball is back in Tampa Bay. An offseason full of changes put six new faces on the roster, but already the team is showing that it is as defensively sound as it has ever been. I think on paper we looked like we had a pretty good defensive team last year. I think we just made some more errors than we, than we expected to. Um, the year before that we were as good as any team in the league, and I think we can expect more of the same this year. Many baseball analysts predict the Rays to go deep into the postseason. But after having those same expectations last year and missing the playoffs for the first time in three years, the team knows they can't rely on expectations. They have to play their game and take it one day at a time. We all put enough pressure on ourselves individually. Um, we try to block out all the, all, any sort of attention that we get through the media or fans. 
um, you know, it's inevitable that we're going to feel the weight of, of, of everybody um, expect, expecting us to do well. But ultimately, if we're confident enough, then, then we don't have to worry about that. And we're lucky enough to play in a market where we're not in a New York or a Boston where we, where we lose a couple games and the whole city seems to be frowning on us. Being only six games into the season, the Rays have had little time to figure out their identity. But head coach Joe Madden has been impressed with what he's seen so far. I am extremely pleased with the style of play and how we went about our business. Everybody. So that's why you play 162 games. You know, you don't go nuts one way or the other. Uh, we did. We're, we're good. I really enjoyed watching the Rays play baseball for three days. So the stage is set and the bats are ready. Only time will tell if the Rays will be the team they were predicted to be. From Tropicana Field, I'm Cassandra Khan for the Digital Bullpen. Sitting on a stage with his teammates in front of family and friends, Manatee defensive tackle Derek Calloway officially signed his letter of intent to join the USF Bulls football program. And Calloway thinks USF is the perfect fit. Uh, USF is a place for me. I like the coaches up there. The players are good. For, I'm going to be around for the next four years, three years of my life. So uh, I really like the atmosphere they got going up there. And I think that program is turning around. That's why I want to be a part of it. Derek Calloway and new USF head coach Willie Taggart have something in common. They both played football here at Manatee High School. Now Hurricanes head football coach Joe Canan says it's no coincidence that Calloway ended up at USF. I, I think that's the whole reason that he went there. He had already committed to the University of Louisville, mm -hmm. and uh, you know Louisville beat Florida in the bowl game. You know it was a, a great commit for Louisville, and and uh, Willie came down and, and had an opportunity to meet him and talk to him, and uh, I think he wanted to be a part of what Willie's trying to build at USF, and so you know we're happy for him, and you know hopefully we'll have others down the road that will will end up going to USF. Reporting from Manatee High School, I'm Cassandra Khan for the Digital Bullpen. The guest speakers of the University Lecture Series know how to draw a crowd. The USF-funded Lecture Series features many famous speakers who connect with their audiences with their experiences. Previous guests include Maya Angelou, rapper Common, Rosario Dawson, and most recently Bill and Juliana Rancic. This year I think is a lot better than previous years. Um, this is my second year at USF, but so far uh, the guests are more geared towards us and relating it, topics back to us where I felt like before they were just kind of speaking at us, not really connecting with the audience. That connection has fans lined up for hours to see what guest celebs have to share. The USF University Lecture Series is one of the most coveted in the nation. Now in its 26th year, the series continues to bring in strong guests for the people of the Bay Area. Outside of the hall where the event is held, fans can purchase the latest books written by the speakers. After the lecture, a meet and greet is held. The lectures are advertised locally and open to anyone who wants to go. E! News host Juliana Rancic and her husband Bill shared their story with over 800 attendees. It was in the local newspaper. Um, my mom actually read it for me because we watched the show, so we were really excited to come. Next up for the ULS, Emmy Award-winning environmental journalist Jeff Corwin. For Florida Focus, I'm Cassandra Hello, Khan. Hello, welcome to Florida Focus. I'm Cassandra Khan, and today is Monday, October 15th. A St. Petersburg soldier was killed in Afghanistan. Army Specialist Brittany Gordon is the first female soldier to die from the Tampa Bay area in the Iraq and Afghanistan conflicts. The 24-year-old Gordon was the daughter of St. Petersburg Assistant Police Chief Cedric Gordon. Funeral arrangements have not been made. Land purchased by a local team owner is drawing attention. Lightning owner Jeff Vinnick was part of a group that purchased seven acres of land along Channel Side Drive. Officials for the Lightning say there are no plans for the land yet. The transaction speculates plans to build a sports district in the area, which could include a baseball stadium. Stadium issues have become a hot topic lately. Last week, the Rays requested permission to explore new stadium locations. That's all we have for you today. Thank you for watching Florida Focus. We'll see you tomorrow. It's never too late to make a difference in someone's life. At the Salvation Army, every day is dedicated to helping others in need. Lacey Herrero brings you the story. Here at the Salvation Army Thrift Store, you'll find clothes. For the past four months, we here at Florida Focus work to bring you news from the Bay Area and beyond. Now we venture off into those areas.
As this semester comes to a close, so does our show, and we thank you for watching. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thank it's been you. amazing. Bye. I love you. <laughs> Marry me.